Number 18. The initial concentrations or pressures of reactants and products are given for each of the following systems. Calculate the reaction quotient and determine the direction in which each system will proceed to reach equilibrium. Okie dokie. So the first thing is, is that I see a balanced equation here. We're on B. I see that it's balanced because I see that we have coefficients. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to write this equation out bigger so that we can use it. I got two NH3s, and that's a gas. This comes to equilibrium with N2, that's a gas, and then 3H2, that's also a gas. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to write out the starting values that they give us, right? They told us these were initial pressures. I know that they're pressures because they say ATM. ATM is a unit of pressure, and they give me a KP, the P stands for pressure as well. So let's see. I got 2.00 ATM for the NH3. So I'm just going to say I got 2.00 ATM here. The N2 was 10. So I'm going to write 10 ATM. And then, oh, also I got 10 ATM over here. Okay. Now I do have starting amounts on both sides, right? On the left hand side, I have two ATM and on the right hand side, I have 10 for both of them. The question is, which way are we going to go? Are we going to go in the forward direction and have this decrease and this increase, or are we going to go in the reverse reaction in which this side will get lower and this side will get higher? Well, that all comes from the reaction quotient. Remember the reaction quotient is the Q value. And I put down the formula here that we've seen time and time again on this chapter, right? What the Q formula is. It's a very generic formula. It's just products divided by reactants. The big P stands for pressure. And remember, you just have to raise it to the coefficients that you see in the balanced equation. So let's set up the formula. QP equals something divided by something else. I got two products. So let's go there first. So I got the pressure of N2, and I don't see a number in front, right? So that means that there's just one of them. So technically I can raise this to the first, but you don't have to. But I'm just going to put this in parentheses. And then now I just have to multiply it by the pressure of the H2. When you're doing this formula, it's multiplication between two uh, products, not addition. So even though the balance equation says addition, this is multiplication. So I have the pressure of H2. And now I see a coefficient, right? I see that I have three H2s. So I'm going to put a three here. Now, I kind of skipped, skipped the gun here, right? But just remember, guys, that if we're using this formula, only aqueous and gases are allowed. So the first thing we really should have done was just to check those states. But they're all gases. My mind kind of saw this in the beginning, so I knew that I was going to use all of these because gases are allowed. Okay, now back to the programming, right? We're just going to divide by the reactant, the pressure of NH3. I see that there is a 2 in front of here, right, a 2. So that's what I got to raise it to. And now let's put in the numbers. So we have the exact formula. Now we just plug in those numbers. So I got 10.00. That's for the N2. The H2 is 10. But I have to cube this one. Oh my goodness. This is going to be some wacky big number it looks like. And now I just have to divide by the pressure of the NH3, which is 2. And that has to be squared. Okay, so let's get a top number, let's get a bottom number, and then we will divide them. So 10 cubed times 10 is 10,000. Big nums. 2 squared is just 4. So maybe I'll just say 4.00, you know, just 4. Who cares about sig figs? SP equals 10,000 
a QP is 10,000 divided by 4, we get 2,500. So still pretty much a big number. Now let's just see. We found the first part. We found that reaction quotient. Now we just have to determine the direction. In order to do this, there's a little trick, guys. Put the QP, or the Q value, on the right-hand side, and the K value on the left of your comparison. So I got 25, this is a zero, 2,500, 2,500, and then the KP, whoa, 6.8 times 10 to the fourth. So if I had to take this out of scientific notation, I just move the decimal four places over. One, two, three, four, and then fill in the, the, uh, the zeros, right? So this would be 68,000. Out of these two, 68,000 versus 2,500, which is the bigger one? Is KP greater than, equal to, or less than, or equal to, right, or less than, or whichever one that I said? Yeah, KP is way greater than the QP. So now we're down to this situation. When the K is much greater than the Q, remember, large Ks mean you favor products. So you want to have a lot of these at the end of the day. So if the K is greater, that means that you have more reactants than needed. You need to get more products. So you need to go the forward direction. So that's basically the answer. We're going to shift or proceed or go, whichever word you want to use. We're going to shift to the right. We're going to use the forward reaction. But then here's the trick that I was talking to you guys about. If you put the Q on the right-hand side, you see this? Treat this as an arrowhead and bring this back. Oh, look, you made an arrow. The arrow's this. And that's also shifting to the right. So there you go, all right? Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Um, yeah, I, I really enjoy making these for you guys. So I hope I'm giving you good educational content. If you want to check out the channel, we also have physics and math videos at the moment. So maybe you or, you know, a friend or a classmate that are in those classes, we may be able to help them out too. All right. So I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in later lessons. Bye-bye.